Hey, Clayton, will my dog be in heaven? This is a great question. This came up, I'm sure, because we have been reading the book of Revelation or we read the book of Revelation over the course of the summer. And so people have been kind of had heaven on their mind. What's the new creation like? And so this question from time to time comes up. It, believe it or not, it comes up from both children and adults. I have talked to many earnest kids who have wanted to know if their pet was going to be with them in the new creation. And many adults who were just as earnest saying, will my dog that I you know, just uh, buried, will they be in heaven? And so uh, I want to tackle this. Now, here's the thing. This is not a simple, straightforward question where the Bible just says, well, let's explain it. Here's what happens to pets. Okay. And when we get into it, we also have to make the clarification that sometimes we mean two different things. Okay. When we use the word heaven, sometimes what people mean is the place people go to immediately after they die. So if a follower of Jesus dies, where do they go to immediately after they have died? They go into the the presence of Jesus in heaven, meaning the place where the kind of the spiritual realm where God rules from uh, his throne in heaven, that's where Christians go when they die. The other thing that people mean when they talk about heaven is where we will be in the end when Jesus returns to the earth, resurrects our bodies and remakes the world. And then we will be in the new heavens and the new earth or what we might call the new creation. And so when people say heaven, they mean one of these two things. The one we call the intermediate state. That means where you are between when you die and when Jesus returns and raises your body from the dead. Or we mean the final state or the new creation, which is the remade world where we will live forever with Jesus. And so the question is, will my dog be in heaven? Now, uh, there is very little information about what we call that intermediate state, that time between when you die and when you are raised. Most of what we know is you're with Jesus and it's better. But beyond that, there's not a lot of details. And the odds of uh, an animal being with you in that state seem pretty low to me, or there's at least no biblical indication to think that there would be anything like uh, your pet being there in that state. But what about the new creation? Okay, so after Jesus raises his people from the dead, remakes the world, everything is perfect, and we live forever in a new heavens and a new earth, will we have our pets there. Okay. Let me make three things really clear. Okay. These are things that we know definitively from the Bible and we can say with confidence. Here's the first one. Big picture. God loves animals. He just loves animals. Okay. You have to understand this. God loves the world that he made. When you read the first page of the Bible, one thing comes through again and again and again and again. You want to talk about repeated words on the first page of the Bible. God says it is good, 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 good. And that includes the animals. That includes your pet, okay? Whatever God made, it is good. That's the first thing. Second thing is this. God loves that you love your animal, okay? God made human beings for a purpose. He actually gave us a job in the beginning, and you know what that job was? to care for creation, right? This is something that is a deep human impulse that uh, exists in us because that's what we were made for. To take care of creation was the original assignment of human beings. Men and women were made to go out and rule the world on God's behalf and to take care of the creatures that were under our care in the same way that God would want them to be taken care of. So we are ruling God's world on God's behalf and that includes taking care of creatures that are dependent on us. So your affection, your compassion, your connection with an animal is a good thing. It is part of being human. And I think, I think that the practice of loving something that is dependent on you is a good formative thing in the way of Jesus and just being a human being in God's world. That's what we're meant to do. The third thing we can say definitively is this, there will be animals in the new creation. Okay, so in Isaiah chapter 11, Isaiah 65, we find specific references to animals. Uh, those are some of those famous passages where it says the lion will lay down with the lamb. Now, hear me on this. Those are poetic passages. They're prophetic passages, which means they are not necessarily literal, meaning uh, here's a photograph of what's going to happen, a lion and a lamb laying down together. They're meant to be images that evoke a certain thing, and they're using the idea of the predator and the prey being in harmony with each other to describe the overall peace and wholeness and 
harmony that the world will experience. Now, I don't know if specifically that scene will happen, but it sure seems like in using that imagery, there is some reference, some indication that those animals will continue to exist in the new creation. And because of the whole idea of the new creation is God is remaking the world as it was intended to be, it would be very, very odd if we did not have animals. God loves animals and he wants to restore creation to the way it was meant to be. So that makes sense. I also think about Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 is kind of the flip side. It's not the new creation. It's the old creation. But it talks about creation itself in this era right now, groaning, longing for the day when it will be set free from its bondage to decay. And it will experience the joy, the same joy as the resurrected sons of God. And so it talking about us as God's people being raised, creation will experience that too. And it longs to, it aches to, it cries out, groans to have that happen. And I think that includes the animal creation. So minimally speaking, there will be animals, which means you will be able to have a pet in the new creation. I'm, I'm willing to, to go out on a limb and say that's possible. But here's the specific question you're, you, you got to ask. Will my pet from this life be there? Okay. Not will I get a new pet in, in heaven? You know, will I be able to have a dog or a horse or a cat or something like that in the new creation? The question is, will the pet that I have now be somehow in the new creation? Will it be resurrected in the same way that I will so that we can continue to have a relationship with that animal? Or to put it another way, do any specific animals from this age make it into the next age, into the new creation, okay? Let me give a few thoughts on this. First is this. The Bible does not address this question in any direct way, okay? So there's no chapter and verse that says yes or no, your pets will be resurrected in the new creation. The second is, there's no indication that specific animals will be resurrected, will be raised from the dead. And the logic of resurrection doesn't seem to apply directly to animals. What I mean by that is this. The logic of resurrection is that no mortal creature, that includes human beings, dogs, cats, etc., we are you know, designed in a way that we die and we don't come back to life unless God grants us that. And so the reason you and I can have the hope of resurrection is because Jesus actually became a human being and as a human being defeated death and came out of the grave. And so now all human beings who are united with Jesus also can be raised from the dead. We share in his resurrection life. So whatever logic gets us resurrected doesn't necessarily apply to all the animals because Jesus didn't become a dog or a cat or, you know, whatever else, a parakeet, whatever you want to be raised in order for them to come back to life. Okay. So we come back to life in Christ. Those animals would have to be in Christ to be raised. Now, maybe there's some other logic that would go in there that would lead to that, but the Bible doesn't seem to point to that. Other thought is this, there's a little bit of a practical problem. If you think that all animals would be raised. Okay. So there's some very weird implications about this. Let's think about this. Do you actually think that every lion is going to be raised from the dead? That's a lot of lions. Where are they, where are they all going to go? Every dinosaur, every ant. Okay, let's think about this. Okay, ants. There are 20 quadrillion ants on the planet. That is 2.5 million ants per person currently alive. So currently for each one of us, there are 2.5 million ants. Ants. And if you added up the weight of all of the ants that exist right now, it's about one fifth of the weight of all humans. When you think about this, ants only live a few months, except for the queen. Most of the ants live only a few months, which means in one year, you're probably going to have four or five generations of ants come and go, which means if they were all raised from the dead, just the ants that were alive this year, they would weigh more than all of the human beings currently alive on earth. And if you add up the hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of years that, that you know, ants have come and gone more than that, you would have quite a huge number of ants. It would be overwhelming. Now, if you do that with the ants and the bees and the termites and the cockroaches and the mosquitoes and all of these other little tiny critters. You obviously don't want a world with that many resurrected uh, insects, right? That's just the insects. If you start adding all the other things, you know, let alone talking about plants or fungi or bacteria or anything like that, you don't really think that all of God's creatures are going to be resurrected and in the new creation. There's a practical problem there, okay? So it's unlikely that all animals get raised. Now, some people sometimes speculate and they say, hmm, I wonder if some of the animals get raised. And it may be not every dog that's ever existed, but what about some dogs? What about the pets of people who are also raised? So C.S. Lewis, who I love to quote, he speculated. He said, I wonder if in the resurrection, 
just as because we are united to Christ, we are raised. What if our pets, the animals we have particularly cared for and are connected to us in an affectionate bond, they also get raised with us. You know, we are raised in Christ and our pets are raised in us. That's a nice thought. You know, C.S. Lewis loved animals, but that doesn't make it true. It doesn't make it biblical, but it's a, you know, it's a, it's a nice, warm, cozy thought. It's just speculation though. Here's the other thing though. Not every joy is meant to be a forever joy. Now, this, this is a hard thing for us, okay? We, when we love something, we, and we enjoy something, when something's special to us, we want to hold on to it and make it last forever. We never want to let it go. But here's the truth. Many joys, many pleasures are only meant to be temporary, and that's part of the goodness of them, part of the preciousness of them. Uh, C.S. Lewis, he actually talked about this. He, he talked about, uh, you know, we, we sometimes think, you know, if that thing that I enjoyed back then wasn't in heaven, I don't know if I could enjoy heaven. And he used this analogy. He would, he would say, you know, uh, we're a little bit like kids who have been told, hey, you're going to go on vacation to the ocean, right? You're going to go on this ocean vacation and it's going to be amazing. Don't you want to go on this vacation to the ocean? And as a kid, you've never seen the ocean. And so you say, I don't know if I want to go there. Is there chocolate at the ocean? And you say, well, no, there's not necessarily chocolate at the ocean. I, I don't know. I don't think there's chocolate, but that's not why you want to go there. Like you want to go because it's the ocean. And they say, well, I like chocolate and I can't imagine it being fun unless there's chocolate at the ocean. And the adult's like, well, no, it's fun in a different way, right? There are some things in this life that we say, look, for this life, this is what we're meant to enjoy. And if I told you that thing wasn't going to be in the new creation, you might say, well, I don't know if I want to go to the new creation if it doesn't have that. But what if there's something more? <laughs> what if there's something better? What if there's something like the ocean, which is a greater good, a bigger good, a new good, a, a pleasure you've never experienced before, that even though the bar of chocolate isn't there, you're going to enjoy this even more. You don't want to miss out on that just because that thing's not going to be there. Sometimes we can be that way with experiences on earth. If I don't have that in the new creation, well, am I going to enjoy it? You don't know yet, but you absolutely, absolutely will, even without that thing, even without the pet that you love. It was a good, wonderful thing, delightful that you enjoyed that, but it's a temporary joy. Here's my final thought. I think it's safe to say that all good earthly loves will be fulfilled in the new creation. See, what God is doing is he's restoring the goodness of the world that he made. And that means if there is a good human affection for something, there will be an object for that affection in the new creation. You, it may not be the specific pet that you had. You know, I may not see my childhood dog again, but that connection, that that love for creatures that we have as human beings, there will be outlet for that. There will be uh, experience of that in the new creation. So your specific pet may not be raised to live forever, but here's the thing. God will not forget your pets and neither will you. You will be able to delight in those memories. You will be able to delight in the good connection that you had forever because that was a precious part of your life. And there will be expression and fulfillment of that desire in other ways in the new creation. Thanks for listening. If you've got your own questions, email questions at biblesavvy.com. Like and subscribe to catch our regular episodes every Monday on the Bible Savvy Podcast.